This video is going to be an overview of GageList. This is going to be the first thing you see when you log on to GageList. This is going to be your dashboard. These top four tiles, these are going to be status related. We can change the status by clicking the cog and selecting a different status. We could also add new statuses if we're an admin or an owner of the account. We can move them around as well. At the bottom four tiles are going to be scheduling related to show us our overdue gauges or gauges due within a certain date range. We can go from seven days all the way out to 180 and we can move those around as well. Down here we have our account information and our support buttons. If we go to the top right part of the screen, we can search for anything in gauge list. Next to that, we have our announcement banner. And beside that, if we click on the small person icon, we can manage our account settings, password changes, user management, and much more. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our gauges. Over here, we have a link to our gauges. This is going to be a list view of all of our gauges. If we click on one, it'll take us to a list view. Here we can choose which columns appear. We can drag and drop these columns where we'd like them. And we could also filter by certain criteria. I'm going to select a few values. And we can get a filtered list. We can select multiple gauges at once. And we can select bulk update. Here we can change different field values. And we could also add other ones as well if we would like to change more. This is handy for manipulating lots of data at one time. We can also print labels and export these records to Excel or delete gauges if we need to. We can also add a gauge. Here in gauge list, all these fields are customizable. You can rename any of these fields and you can also hide a good amount of them. Next, we have our planning section. We can look at anything with the due date and a date range from seven to 180 days. Also anything overdue, anything without a due date, anything that's unscheduled, and we can look at a calendar view of when things are coming due. This calendar will show when a gauge is coming due on a certain date. And we can also click that to take us to that gauge record itself. We also have a list view of our calibration records. If we click that, it'll take us to a similar list view as the gauge. Here we can export our data. One click can export all our data from gauge list, or we can do it by gauge record, calibration records, or even settings and manufacturers. We can also import our data here. Here we can download this template, map our data onto that template, and upload top level gauge records into gauge list. We also have a report section. We have a lot of different reports and even a report builder. We can click add report. And here we can choose different date ranges, like quarterly and annually. And we can choose to filter by certain criteria. Down here we can select the content that we want to be sent in the report. And then we can save this report, name it, and then run it for future uses. Here we have our settings options. Like manufacturers, we can come in here, add new manufacturers if we would like, or delete the ones in the system. We can also add custom fields. Gageless has many different types of custom fields, even an auto incrementing custom field. Here in general settings, we can edit the different type values that are in Gageless, delete them or add new values. We also can check certain options for our account and also upload our logo here as well. In our notification settings, we can choose the report that gets sent out and which day it gets sent out on. We can choose a specific day of the week or days of the week, or we could select a monthly option to select certain days of the month that we want our report to get sent out on. We can choose the report that gets sent. Here we have a 30 day schedule, so any gauges coming due in the next 30 days will be sent in that report. We can choose all the way from 7 to 180. We can also choose to include overdue gauges. We also have the distribution list. The emails that get entered into the distribution list receive a notification for every gauge in this system coming due. We could also choose to include our gauge assignees who are assigned to specific gauges and just need notifications for those tools. We can customize our email subject text and also a separate one for our assignees, as well as customizing the information that gets sent in the report. We also have localization. This is where we would go to rename fields. Any field that you would like to rename, just come in here and enter the new name that you would like displayed. We could also hide a field if it has this checkbox next to it, if we don't want it to appear on the form. 
we could also make the field required as well. So that way someone would have to make a selection or enter data before saving the tool. Gauge field labels are going to be on the left side. Calibration field labels are on the right. We also have the test template labels and the dashboard activity field labels as well. If your company has multiple locations, then multi-site may be useful for them. Multi-site allows you to have multiple gauge-less locations and have them bridged together with a multi-site dashboard. Here, as we can see, we can go from our current site and flip between another one with just a click of the button. We could do that for all of our sites and gauge list. We could also go to our multi-site dashboard by clicking up top, and we can manage sites individually or users to assign them to specific sites with individual user roles. If you have any questions about multi-site, feel free to reach out to us. This has been an overview of GageList. Thank you.